All right, so when we calculated these uh, heat problems now, we found that the answer to this one ended up positive and the answer to this one ended up positive. Uh, we have a change in temperature here, so Q is equal to M, C, and delta T, just like the uh, video we did on heat calculations. We have mass, the specific heat uh, of liquid water, and then the change in temperature, final 100 minus the initial 25, and so it ends up being a positive value for the heat. Second one ended up a positive value for the heat. The next one here, well, the temperature is now going from 75 down to zero. So again, final minus initial, and we ended up with a negative value for the heat. Uh, and then we talked about what does it mean to be released? So how much heat is needed to boil and how much heat is released when it freezes? So uh, let's have a little discussion on uh, positive and negative values then. Uh, the, the uh, concept is called thermodynamics, and the value positive and negative is not uh, in terms of, you know, uh, a negative one compared to a positive one on a number line. Uh, what it does instead is it tells us if it has a positive value, it's going in one direction, and if it has a negative value, it's going to go in the opposite direction. Uh, just the graph that we've done so far, uh, we had heat on the x-axis and we had let's say temperature on the y-axis and and we saw a graph that looked similar to that where the flat spots were phase changes uh, and then these were temperature changes uh, so q is equal to m delta or mc delta t q is equal to m delta h mc delta t m delta h uh, and once again mc delta t to calculate how much heat well if you're going in the opposite direction so if you start here and end there, going in that direction, that would be going from liquid to solid, so you're freezing. Well, the amount of heat is going to be less when you're finished than it was when you started. All right, so the, the idea is, uh, is, as I said, thermodynamics, we, we look at a, at a frame of reference, and our frame of reference that we're studying is called the system. So we consider what is called the system, and then anything outside of the system is called the surroundings. So the system is what you're studying, and the surroundings is literally everything else in the universe. So we are focusing on what happens to the system. Now that's something as simple as you're doing a chemical reaction in a beaker. Well, it's what's in the beaker. So here's our system. So then anything else besides the beaker would be considered the surroundings, including your hand uh, if you were to grab onto the beaker. All right, so... Considering the system, heat can be traveling from the surroundings into the system. So if you say initial and final, in the beginning compared to the end, well, the final amount of heat is going to be you know, greater than it was initially. So you're going to have more heat in the system than when you started. So therefore, you know, it would be a positive value. So when heat moves into the system, you're going to have a positive value. The temperature of the system would be rising. The opposite were true. If heat is leaving the system. So now, final and initial. So now your initial amount of heat is going to be greater than your final amount of heat. So you're losing heat from the system to the surroundings. The temperature of the system uh, would be dropping. All right, so we're going to talk in this video then about uh, calorimetry and what calorimetry is. Well, it involves some kind of insulated container, so some kind of insulated container, uh, something as simple as a styrofoam coffee cup. That's what you'll often see these uh, called a, a uh, just, you know, a basic styrofoam coffee cup, some hot coffee in there. Um, it's an insulated, not perfectly, but it's an insulated container, and it's going to have some water in it. So you're going to know the mass of the water, you know the specific heat of the water, and if you have a thermometer, you could measure the final temperature of the water and also the initial temperature of the water. So basically, you can calculate how much heat is occupied by that water inside of that container. So now, if I were to take, let's say, a piece of iron, um, and I were to heat it to a high temperature. So we're going to have a hot metal, and we're going to take that hot metal and we're going to put it in the water. 
If we know the mass of the hot metal, if we know the specific heat of the hot metal, and we would know the final temperature, as we're going to see in a second of the hot metal, we could use you know, mc delta t to do another calculation. Well, the idea of calorimetry involves the conservation of energy, the fact that energy cannot be created nor destroyed, just like the conservation of mass. Matter cannot be created nor destroyed. So that means the total amount of energy in our system here, in our, in our surroundings, are constant. Can't be created, can't be destroyed. So if I take this hot object and I put it into the water, this is going to lose heat because it's at a higher temperature. So the hot metal, the temperature is going to drop. The water, the temperature is going to rise when they're mixed until the two meet. So the temperature of the water is going to keep rising. The temperature of the metal is going to keep dropping until they're equalized. So then the energy or the heat that is lost by the hot metal is going to be gained by the water. All right, so there's the math. Uh, and... Heat lost equals heat gain. So the heat lost by the hot object placed in the water is equal to the heat gained by the water. So heat loss equals heat gain. Now, think about what we just talked about in terms of sign, positives and negatives. If we have our hot piece of iron here, uh, let's say the temperature is, I don't know, 1,000 degrees Celsius. We have our water. Let's say it's at... 25 degrees Celsius. Well, if I'm going to mix the two, so I'm going to drop my piece of metal in there, my wonderful artwork, the, the metal is going to lose heat. So the overall heat value for this is going to be negative. Why? Well, because the change in temperature is going to be a negative value. Because its final temperature minus its initial temperature, well, its initial temperature is at 1,000. Its final temperature, we can calculate it, as you're going to see in a, in a minute, but uh, it's going to be something less than 1,000. So, you know, the delta T takes care of the sign there. It's going to be a negative value. Over here, the temperature is, final temperature, is going to be um, something greater than 25 degrees. So this one's going to be positive. So if we were under this to be true, where we can set up a mathematical equation where it's equivalent, this one is going to be a negative value because it's losing. This one's going to be a positive value. So it would be completely invalid to say that those two are equal. So we have to fix that. And the way we fix that is we place a negative sign in front of the MC delta T on that side, as you're going to see uh, here. So heat lost MC delta T of the hot object. Heat gained MC delta T of the water. But we have to place a negative sign in front of the hot side. Actually, you could place it in front of the, the water as well and make it equal. But we like positives. We're not negative people. So uh, we're going to put the negative in front of there. It's going to change the delta T, which would also be negative. And we're going to end up with a positive on that side. And then it's going to be equal to the positive on that side. And hallelujah, our algebra will work. All right, so the two keys then is don't forget that the hot side gets a negative sign. Because then your algebra doesn't work and you're not going to get the right answer. Also, the final temperature is the same for both sides. So both objects. Objects meaning the water and whatever it was that was hot. So think about that again. Our piece of iron at 1,000 degrees. Our water at 25 degrees. When we mix them, the temperature of this is going to drop. The temperature of this is going to rise until we reach an equilibrium of sorts or until there's no more heat transfer. Uh, and that will be the final temperature of both the hot object and the water. So when we do delta T, remember, we always do final minus initial. All right, so there's my hints. All right, so let's just try one. Um, so a piece of unknown metal with a mass of 75.5 grams and a temperature of 255 degrees Celsius is dropped into 150 grams of water at 25 degrees Celsius. If the final temperature is 27.9, find the C of the metal. So we're looking for the specific heat of the metal. Well, heat lost is equal to heat gained. So negative MC delta T, remember add that, is equal to MC delta T. I always keep the hot object on the left-hand side 
and the water on the right hand side, just to make my conventions the same. That way I don't mess it up. And that way I always remember to also include that negative sign over there on the, neg on the uh, hot side. Okay, so let's just plug the numbers in. So negative, the mass. All right, so it says the, mat the mass of the uh, metal is uh, 75.5 grams. So 75.5 grams. Specific heat. We don't know. We don't know what the metal is. If we knew the metal, we can go look it up. But we don't know the metal, so we don't know the specific heat. That's what we're trying to calculate. Change in temperature. Change in temperature. It is starting at 255 degrees. The water is starting at 25 degrees. This is going to drop. This is going to rise. And it's telling you that the final temperature of the system is 27.9 degrees Celsius. So final temperature, 27.9, minus the initial temperature of, I was about to write 1,000, of 255 degrees. Equals. So that's the hot side. That's our uh, metal side. So now the water. So the water has uh, a mass of 150.0 grams. The specific heat of water, 4.18. You should know that by now. We've done enough of those, but that's given to us there. And now the final minus initial temperature of the water. The final temperature, 27.9. The initial temperature, 25. And we have everything we need in order to solve for C. So now a little algebra. Um, we know we've got to subtract inside the parentheses first. So uh, 27.9 minus 255. So this is negative 227.1 degrees. That one's 2.9 degrees. So I'm going to multiply those three together. 150 times 4.18 times 2.9. So on this side, I got 18, 18.3. I'm going to divide that by the negative 75 and the negative 227. So divided by negative 75.5. Add that negative sign there. And of course, I messed something up. What happened there? Oh, we got to divide it by and a minus. Uh, we want to take 18, 18.3 and divide that by negative 75.5. And then divide by negative 227.1. So we get C equals, the specific heat equals 0 0.106. Now, for units, we can go through and keep track. This is grams degree C. This is joules per gram degree C. So, I mean, we could, we could figure out the units, but we could kind of cheat. We know the specific heat of water has a unit of joules per gram degree C, so this is going to be joules per gram degree C. Just cheat. And that's a reasonable specific heat, 0.1. You know, it's a metal. We talked about the specific heat of metals compared to that of water. Notice also the temperature of the water only rose 2.9 degrees, whereas the uh, metal dropped over 200 degrees. Well, a few reasons. The water is more massive. We have more mass, almost double. Um, and the specific heat of water is 4. So we know that it takes a lot of energy to change the temperature of water. It does not take a lot of energy to change the temperature of a metal. Uh, so it makes sense that the final temperature is closer to that of water than that of the metal. Okay. Second type of question we're going to have to be able to solve. A piece of iron has a mass of 23.5 grams, an initial temperature of 455 degrees. It is dropped in 150 grams of water at 25 degrees. What is the final temperature? So now we're going to calculate that final temperature. We know that it, the metal is starting up at uh, 455. The water is starting at 25. The water is going to rise. The metal is going to drop until the two meet at this final temperature. So now we want to be able to calculate that. Uh, so a little bit more difficult in the algebra. Setup is the same. Negative, hot object. So uh, the iron's the hot object, so the mass times the specific heat, which is listed right here at the end. Change in temperature. All right, so the change in temperature is the final temperature. We don't know it. T. Minus the initial temperature, which we know is 455. So that's the left-hand side, hot side. Equals the mass of the water, M. C of water, 4.18. And once again, the delta T, so change in temperature, the final temperature of the water, we don't know. But we do know that it's the same as the final temperature of the metal. Okay, so final temperature minus the initial temperature, 25. All right, so there's our setup. We have to do some algebra. Um, I like to simplify my life using my calculator, so I, 
We know that we're going to have to multiply these at some point and those and maybe distribute. That would be the simplest way to solve this. That times that. Don't forget the negative sign. Distribute it into the parentheses. That times that. Distribute it into the parentheses. But like I said, I, I like to make my life easier. So here's, here's how I solve this to make my life easier. I'm going to multiply these two together. So 150 times 4.18. Now, I, I only want to distribute once. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by these first. So 23.5 and 0.45, and I'll take the negative sign with it. So that, that's going to be gone from that side. So on this side, I'm going to have t minus 455 equals. So now I already multiplied those. So let's divide by the negative 23.5 and divide by 0.45. So now I have negative 59.29, um, and I am going to distribute that into the parentheses, so I don't have to do it once. So it's negative 59.3t, so we'll multiply that in, and then it's minus 25, so negative 59 and a negative 25, so times negative 25, um, and I'm going to add, see so it changed the sign, 1483. So again, some algebra there. So now I have this, t minus 455 equals negative 59.3t plus 1483. Got to get the t's together. So again, I don't like to do the negative. So I could subtract t from this side, but I like to keep it positive. So add 59.3 to both sides. So I'm going to add 59.3t. So 1t plus 59.3t is 60.3t equals, and then again, I'm going to add 455 to both sides. So add uh, that number on my calculator already, plus 455 and I get 1937.3. So T equals, divide now by 60.3, divided by 60.3, uh, and we get 32.1 degrees Celsius. Now, I can evaluate to see, does that answer make sense? Well, from what we said before, you could see the water rose from 25 to 32.1. The hot iron went from 455 all the way down to 32.1. So one way I can evaluate my answer is if it ended up outside this range, if I got something less than 25 or greater than 455, I know I messed up. Also, the final answer should be somewhat closer to the water depending on the, the mass. You can see I have a, a really massive water compared to the mass of the iron, so you know it's uh, quite a bit higher. Plus, we know that the specific heats are quite a bit different, so my answer makes sense. All right, so there's some calorimetry problems for you, um, and uh, we're going to be doing a lot more of those in class.